David Ide, thanks so much for coming okay, Mike. on Access TV. I know it's probably uh, a little bit beneath you, but uh, oh, <laughs> beneath. <laughs> you're, you're worldwide. No, no, but, uh, there's, uh, there's no, there's no beneath or above. You know, uh, this is, these are all vehicles for getting information out. And, uh, they're, they're all equally important. Access TV. A lot of people in Austin, Texas, watch Access TV. You'd be surprised. You know, we have people like Alex Jones and. Uh, uh, Jeff Contreras and uh, Chris Athanas on Access TV there, and uh, so people get their start on Access yeah, TV. Yeah, I've done a few Access uh, TV uh, interviews around uh, America, um, and uh, in, in many ways they are a, a, a very important way of getting information out because, of course, the mainstream yeah. uh, just wants to jump on this stuff. Um, you know, mustn't tell people the truth; it might affect advertising. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. First of all, tell us who David Icke is. Um, well, I uh, was uh, born in what we call in England a uh, working class family um, in a big council estate um, back in 1952. And um, I, I was uh, brought up um, with a father who um, was very much uh, a questioner of the system. He was uh, in the medical corps during the war and uh, saw that um, you know, people were used as fodder. He also um, saw the, the way that uh, people were living in uh, abject poverty in the places he went to, um, actually around uh, fantastic riches and things like the Roman Catholic Church and what have you. And uh, he was very uh, uh, cynical about the whole system of life and the way that, that people are controlled. So I was kind of brought up in that. I was always very um, uh, questioning of authority. And I became a professional soccer player. That finished with, with arthritis when I was 21, and I became a journalist. And uh, I was a newspaper journalist and then radio, and then I, I, I became a network uh, anchor man for the BBC. And then during the 80s, um, I started to realize that uh, the way the world was uh, controlled was nothing like what we believed it was. That uh, although there appeared to be uh, different sides in politics and what have you, um, if you went uh, behind the scenes, the, the sides started to disappear into one. Um, and then in the uh, uh, late 80s, early 90s, um, I went through a massive uh, transformation uh, within myself um, and I started to see the world in a very different way. And I started uh, a journey, which is still going, in which there was a trickle of information to start with, um, that the world was not like we thought it was. And I just followed it. And the trickle of information has become a tidal wave now and, yeah. and it's taken me into areas that, uh, my goodness me, I never thought I'd be going. Um, and I've been to more than 40 countries researching this, I do it full time and um, the world's very different now when I look through my eyes than, uh, than it was uh, 13 years ago when I started, that's for sure. Well, you, you discuss the New World Order in a lot of your books. Tell the people of Austin, Texas, Hopefully they've heard about the New World Order, but what is the New World Order? Well, um, the, the whole theme of my books really is, is what um, has become known as the New World Order, the code name for, in effect, um, let's not uh, you know, hide the fact, a, a global fascist state. Um, what you can pick up is a series of uh, bloodlines um, and uh, a secret society network that actually began in the ancient world far, far back. Uh, Babylon was one of its major centers, which is why, as I show in the books, uh, there's so many, there's so much Babylonian symbolism all around us, because the same mentality, the same networks, the same bloodlines are still in control. And what they did was um, expand um, uh, out of uh, the Near and Middle East into Europe, where these bloodlines became the aristocracy and royal families of Europe. Um, and Thanks to the, uh, the European empires, particularly the British Empire, of course, on which they said the sun never set, it was so vast, um, these bloodlines were exported all over the world. Um, and they uh, ran uh, the, the colonies, they ran the colonies of, of uh, what became the United States. And what happened then um, is that there was a switch from uh, one kind of dictatorship to another, and the, and the one they switched to is the far more potent uh, form of dictatorship. Um, one dictatorship, which has a finite life, is one that you can see, touch and taste. It's, it's Hitler's Germany, it's uh, Stalin's uh, Russia, Soviet Union. Um, you know where you stand. It's apartheid in South Africa. Um, you know who the controllers are, you know you're controlled. Now, because you have a target, mm -hmm. um, the human desire for freedom will eventually, it might take some time, will eventually rebel against that. 
Um, and that's basically what you had um, when this network was running the colonies of America and the other places around the world in its empire. Um, however, the most potent form of control is what I call the prison without the bars. And what happened uh, when the uh, colonial powers like the British appeared to uh, pull back and give independence to the United States and independence to African countries and that stuff is actually they replaced um, overt dictatorship with covert dictatorship. Um, the covert dictatorship is far more potent because people do not rebel against not being free when they actually believe they are. Um, it's, uh, it's like they sit there and cook um, because the, you know, the, the water's being um, uh, heated very slowly. You know, they can the frog in the pot. Perhaps the frog in the yeah. thing, frog in the saucepan. So what happened is that um, when uh, the British Empire apparently retracted out of the uh, United States, they left behind here the bloodline and the secret society network through which the bloodline manipulates itself into power and they have gone on controlling the United States ever since. One of the, the great myths of the world is um, the, the, the problems are caused by uh, uh, originally in their base form by big bad satanic America. Uh, America has been set up by the uh, Illuminati powers, this network, in Europe as the fall guy to get people looking over there at big bad America, it's all America! And, and therefore, people are not turning around and seeing where the real power is. Um, the present uh, ludicrous lunatic administration of George Bush may be firing literally the bullets, but they're loaded in Europe. Um, not by the governments of Europe, but by the centre of this uh, web, the secret society web that Who uh, are the historical these re uh, reasons has been located. Do you have any names? Well, um, if you look at the major uh, banking families, mm -hmm. Um, you look at the major families that control the transnational corporations, you look at the Roth Rothschilds, the Rockefellers. Um, what, what, what they've created as they've passed um, through um, history, uh, expanding their power all the time, is a structure of, um, like Russian dolls, one doll inside a bigger doll inside a bigger doll. Their structure is small pyramids inside bigger pyramids inside bigger pyramids until you have a, a global pyramid that encompasses all the others. And if, if you look at this pyramid structure, um, look at any organization, a, a business, a bank, a, a university, a government, they're all structured as pyramids. Um, at the top, you've got a tiny, tiny few people who know what the real deal is in that organization, what the real motivation is, what the agenda is. As you come down um, the pyramids, you meet more and more people in the organizations, but as they come down, they know less and less of what the organization's really about. They only know their little part in it. They're not trying to manipulate uh, a global fascist state. They're trying to earn money for their family. Useless dudes. Yeah, so when people say, it's the government, it's the Freemasons, it's, it's not. The, the vast majority of people in government have no idea that they are daily playing a part in building not just a global prison, but let's be fair, their own prison for their own children also. Same with the journalists and stuff like that. So this um, uh, pyramid structure what they do um, is, as you, as you come up it, um, people who are not in the, in the game, or are not uh, acceptable to this uh, power elite, are filtered out. So by the time you get to the, to the peaks of the pyramids in these major organizations, um, only those are either serving the agenda or acceptable to it are there. So if people want names, just look at the, the, the families and the, the, the people who are running the major corporations, the, the major banks who are at the top of the pyramids in government, and you're looking at people who are either uh, placemen in awareness or placemen um, who are just there to do a job um, for this elite without fully realizing uh, what they're part of. Um, and this, um, this elite, this Illuminati, has been uh, expanding its power all the way through these centuries um, with the um, uh, idea, the motivation, the uh, agenda of taking the planet over. So if you go from Babylon, uh, their headquarters in the ancient world, they then moved to Rome. And what happened when they headquartered in Rome? We had the Roman Empire, we had the creation of the Roman Church. You then uh, move, move further through history, and that although that it's still massively uh, influential in Rome and that, that part of the world, it moved further up into Europe and it's centered in places like London particularly, uh, Paris and, and Germany. Um, and um, that's where, uh, at operational level, um, 
the bullets are, are loaded. And like I say, uh, they get America to shoot them, so everyone's looking over there when the power's over here. And the idea, un, un, uh, obviously, a simple mathematical equation. Um, if there's a few of you, and in awareness, compared with the global population, there's not many of these people, um, you have to centralize decision making. Because the more points of decision making there are, the more diversity of decision making there, are, that there is, um, the less control you're going to have over it. Um, symbolically, it's like um, someone on a stage, uh, like, you know, they spin those plates on sticks. If you've got loads and loads of plates and sticks all over the stage, you're kind of running around trying to keep them all going. Eventually, they're going to start crashing. What you want um, to make it most efficient and, and easiest for you is you want one big plate and one big stick. You stand there and do that all day. So this is why we've had this <clears throat> incessant movement of centralization in all areas of our lives. Um, it's not by accident. It's by design. Because um, they want to create a situation, and uh, in Europe, of course, we, we've already got the European Union, which is uh, a centralized uh, uh, fascist body, um, which dictates to the countries of Europe. Um, countries that previously were making their own decisions are now having a dictated to from a central point. And that's one step from the goal, which is world government, uh, in which uh, a world government would make all the major decisions affecting a country's uh, politics, a, a, a country's economy, a country's military uh, capability. A world army, which uh, I had a mainstream journalist say to me, well, what, what, what's the good of a world army? There'd be no one to fight, you know. And I thought, you're a mainstream journalist, aren't you? Um, of course, what, what, why a world army? To impose the decisions of the world government. Hello, you know, intelligent life calling planet Earth. Um, and then you have um, uh, the World Central Bank uh, that, that wants, of course we've got the European Central Bank now in Frankfurt, the centre for the Rothschilds uh, through, throughout uh, history, um, and uh, they want a world currency which uh, would not be f uh, physical money, it would be uh, electronic and cashless society for which there are fundamental implications for freedom. And uh, they want the, the jewel in the crown uh, of this agenda which is the microchip population. And um, the, uh, Which they're starting in the United States. <coughs> People are literally taking it. Exactly. Lining up to take it. Yes, they are. And, and you know, when I and, and, of course, many others were writing about this many years ago, this was the agenda. People were laughing in your face. Yeah. Um, and so what, what, um, what we're seeing in the world, once you know um, the agenda, which is centralization of global power, a global dictatorship, and you, you understand the methods uh, 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 and how they bring this about, like this, this classic method that I call problem-reaction-solution, where you create the problem, you blame someone else for it, you get the public to see the problem the way you want it, and you get the public to say, hey, something must be done about this, what are you going to do about it? And then those who covertly created the problem offer the solutions to the problems they've created, uh, which change society in ways that would not uh, be ac accepted by the public without the initial problem. Uh, I've just described September the 11th, by the way. Yeah. Um, and uh, so um, once you know the methods, like problem, reaction, solution, you know the goal, which is this centralized uh, state, the world suddenly goes, whoa, I can see it now. You turn on CNN, you know, criminal news network, you turn on ABC, bang, you can see it happening in front of your eyes. And uh, the left in politics um, uh, has now uh, discovered in the last few years globalization. Uh, but so, unfortunately, you know, the, the, the left in politics, um, and I, I, don't, I, you know, I'm not left, right, I, I reject it all. <laughs> it's all a nonsense. Uh, but the left in politics are what they call themselves, and still a struggle to, to, to see that globalization, which is what? Centralization of global power. It's just the agenda unfolding. Uh, they they, they, they some struggle to get uh, their heads around the fact that this is not globalization caused by big bad corporations that want bigger and bigger profits to exploit the people. But it, the, 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 the corporations are not the end, they are the means or a means to an end, which is total centralization of power in all areas of our lives. Um, and uh, there was a, a documentary in Britain by an Australian journalist called John Pilger about globalization, in which uh, he pointed out that um, a quarter now of the world's economic activity is down to uh, 200 um, corporations. Now, that's basically uh, where the left sees it. Um, if you go to the next stage, 
and you realize how this Russian doll pyramid within pyramid structure works, those 200 corporations are actually one corporation. Um, and when you get to that level, um, you, you see the world in a totally different way. I mean, you know, when you've got documents coming to light, uh, written for the Bush administration um, before it was illegally put into power, um, which are talking about uh, using Iraq as an excuse to uh, enter the Middle East, that, that, that Syria and um, Iran were targets, were going to be targets, so was North Korea, and they want the democratization of China with American troops playing a part in that. Um, and, and then since the Bush administration has come to power, that document is unfolded on the news. And uh, as I'm speaking to you now, um, we have uh, the next stage of the Middle Eastern situation being prepared with Powell and Rumsfeld and people like that talking about terrorism and what have you involving Syria and all this stuff with Iran. They're just setting out the agenda. And what they have to do, of course, uh, Mike, is they have to obscure the real game with the movie. So um, they'll invent uh, that uh, they're liberating Iraq. They'll invent the fact that Osama bin Laden was the orchestrator of 911 for the excuse to go into Afghanistan and all that stuff. So um, that's why I call CNN the movie channel. And if people want uh, to know what's really going on, um, the mainstream media is not the place to go. Um, it's the alternative media. What about DavidIke.com? I bet you have some information on there to well, share. Well, we've, we've got 5,000 web pages there. Wow. But, um, uh, and the, we have a, a headlines page that is uh, updated every day, and there's a fantastic amount of information on that. Um, and basically, uh, it, it, it's there for what I'm talking about. If people um, watch the mainstream news, they're not watching what's happening. They're watching what the authorities want people to believe is happening. So what I do on the website and what other people, uh, of course, um, uh, do with, with their websites uh, with the same motivation is um, balance that by uh, presenting the information the mainstream won't tell you. Yeah. And um, I have to say, <laughs> even on a, a basic logical point of view, uh, what they don't want us to know clearly uh, makes absolute sense of events that seem um, unexplainable without the knowledge of the agenda behind them. Well, if, if these people we're talking about are so powerful, how are they going to let the internet just continue to expand? Do you think they'll shut that down eventually? Well, I mean, if you read this document, um, which uh, was written for the Bush administration uh, before it came to power in September 2000, that talks about these countries, which have since been targeted exactly as the document uh, says, what it also says is they want control of cyberspace mm. to stop the enemies of America um, uh, getting information out. What they mean is the people who've sussed the game and want to communicate to others getting information out. Um, what I think about the internet is that um, I think there are many, many levels of it, um, but first of all, it exists because of military technology. Um, they've not allowed the internet to, be, to become what it is unless there was an ulterior motive for them, there was something in it for them. And my, my feeling is this, there are some very, very good things about the internet in relation to their agenda. First of all, um, you can get a, a profile of someone by following their movements through websites and stuff. Um, email is the easiest um, form of communication to monitor. Um, and, and so there are some very good things in terms of surveillance. Um, but there are some very bad things too um, that come with that, which is um, websites that um, are now getting tremendous hits um, and growing all the time, which are actually exposing the game. And what I think, uh, Mike, is, uh, is their agenda is um, to give the impression, first of all, as they have, that this is like freedom of information, and then start, and they're already doing it, start to pick off the bad things on the internet um, in relation to their agenda while keeping the good things, which is uh, you know, the ability for surveillance and, and many other points. So I think the, the, the internet will definitely uh, be targeted and is being targeted, let's be fair. I mean, we, we've got, a, we've got a, a good server now um, who is uh, you know, very supportive, but we've had to move, I think, three or four times Wow. Um, because uh, um, the server was, was, was threatened or challenged or whatever, and they've said, oh, no, this, this, there's too much trouble. Go, go, go. You know. Let me ask you one more question about Bush administration, and then we'll... I want to move on to some local issues about right. Austin because 
there's some people that have read, read your books here that uh, said you talk about Austin a little bit in, the, in, in some of your books about uh, the uh, University of Texas having the uh, tower that lo looks like the owl. Well, um, I've, uh, I, I can't say I'm an expert on what's going on in, te in, uh, in Austin, but um, Texas um, in uh, general is a very, very important place for the Illuminati. I mean, I mean you'll know from your own research uh, the number of times uh, if you follow the trial, mm -hmm. it comes back to Texas. You know, um, the, 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 the oil industry alone is uh, completely controlled by these people. You've got the Bush family connection to Texas. I mean, the Bush family are... Um, well, actually, we don't claim them here. No, no, they, cla they claim <laughs> you. Some of us don't. They claim you, I know. Yeah. But I mean, what the Bush family, I mean, you couldn't make up their family history. Um, it is so utterly grotesque. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, of course, a lot of it's gone on in Texas. So it's Bohemia very Grove, place. Skull and Bones, you talk about that in your books. Yeah, I, the thing is, uh, Mike, that uh, as, as I've researched this over the years, um, I have no belief system uh, to defend. Therefore, I go where the information takes me. I don't edit because, oh no, if I go there, my belief system might be challenged. I'm not going there. I go wherever the information takes me. Uh, and so I've gone into some real challenging places. And one of the things that staggered me most um, is that we have this idea that human sacrifice ritual and the sacrifice of children is like some ancient, bloody pagan, historical kind of aberration. It's all happened a long time ago. Well, not only is it going on today, it is going on at a scale that is beyond the imagination. And it's being performed by some of the most famous people in America and uh, the world. It's being performed, these uh, sacrificial rituals, by the people like the Bush family, um, by uh, the royal family of uh, Britain, um, who are steeped in this uh, uh, blood ritual because um, it goes all the way back to Babylon and before that but you can pick it up in Babylon quite comfortably so they're performing the same rituals now you don't um, have to convince me because no, no. I've been there all right absolutely <laughs> so I mean but Bohemian Grove um, is, is uh, the most famous uh, of these places but they go on all yeah. over the world and Europe and Britain are a massive center for Satanism how high up is the Bush family in the Illuminati? Well, I think Father George Bush, um, as presidents go, is, is, is very high in the American um, hierarchy. Uh, because most presidents, including his son, I mean, cranky, you know, if, 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 if George W. Bush had a brain cell, it would die of loneliness, you know. Um, so um, he's not. I mean, he's an absolute puppet pulled by Cheney and his father and what have you. Um, but Bush the father is, mm -hmm. as presidents go, pretty high up there because um, the people with the real power, real or really orchestrating this, they are not going to put themselves on public display where they can be identified. They, they operate in the shadows. So um, the people that make uh, political office, even president of the United States, they're, they're nowhere near the top and they're just expendable people. Um, and we have to get over this idea, if we're going to see what's going on, this basic idea that the president runs the country. The president is a puppet who runs the country on behalf of those that put him there. I mean, I love this thing. Um, anyone can become president of the United States. I <laughs> love it. I mean, hey, I mean, crikey, it'll be on HBO or something, and there, a comedy channel. Um, the... Uh, president uh, uh, doesn't run the country and neither can anyone become president. Uh, when you look at the presidents from George Washington to George W. Bush and you go through their genealogy, um, we have, uh, what, 280 million people or something like that in America now. Look at the millions, uh, hundreds of millions more since uh, 1776 and the Declaration of Independence. Um, America is also a, 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 an incredibly diverse uh, people in terms of their genetic history. If anyone can become president of the United States, clearly the presidents of the United States from Washington to Bush should reflect, increasingly so now, this fantastic genetic diversity. When you do their genealogy, 
Um, the presidents of the United States are no less a royal dynasty than those in Britain and Europe. Um, because they, they go, they, their bloodlines go back to the uh, royal families and aristocracy of Europe, which go back down into the nearer Middle East. We are looking at this, the same interbreeding tribe um, that have just expanded their power over the centuries and now have reached a point, because of the centralization, um, where they can make their final play to take the whole place over with this uh, centralized uh, structure. Uh, and if people find it um, hard to believe um, that, that, that people would be in power because of their bloodline or anything like that, well, um, I, I would just take them on a trip to Buckingham Palace. We have a head of state in uh, Britain who is only the queen because of her DNA. Only. If she had a different DNA, she might be cleaning the throne, not sitting on it. This is how ludicrous it gets, right? <laughs> now, people say, oh, yeah, well, that, that's king, kings and queens. Yes, uh, yeah, because that, that, that's dear bloodline, yeah, right? Okay, well, hold on a minute. That's, that, they call them kings and queens. Therefore, you say, oh, yes, it's, 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 it's bloodline and all that stuff. What actually happened is when the people started to rebel against this over in your face dictatorship by, by royal king and queen, these bloodlines started going into other places of power. They went into the, 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 the new politics, they went into the banking, they went into the uh, ownership of, uh, of business and what have you. Media. Ownership of the media, big one. Of course, <laughs> if you want to sell people a, a movie, a lie, um, to obscure what's really going on, then you need to control the major sources of information that people are gonna, gonna uh, receive because then you can sell on the lie and that's why the media is, is, is owned by this um, Illuminati. So, um, like I say, the presidents of the United States are no more or less uh, um, uh, a royal dynasty than those in Europe. And when, and when you, you, you look at some of the things that Burke's Peerage, this Bible of European uh, royal and aristocratic genealogy based in London have said, um, how about this? And what are the chances of this? This is Burke's Peerage. Every single presidential election from George Washington to George W. Bush has been won by the candidate with the most royal genes. From wow, Every one, bar none, that. not one exception. Um, and uh, it, 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 it's come to, come to the point where if you do the genealogy of the two presidential candidates, you can tell which one's going to win. It's extraordinary. Why was it that George W. Bush, this village idiot, um, attracted record amounts of money for his presidential campaign? Because he was the chosen one. And even though he was such a bad candidate and couldn't even win with that, they just rigged the thing in Florida um, <laughs> and uh, away you went. Um, and, and now we have an unelected dictator um, taking America into war and the world into war after war. I mean, you know, you couldn't make this up. It's so ludicrous. And it's time, really, for people uh, pulling no punches to, uh, to stop sitting on their butts, stop watching the world uh, pass them by, stop letting life live them, and starting to live life and affect their own reality. And instead of saying, well, nothing I can do about it. <laughs> get up, get on with it. Things are being done. You know, when I, when I f first um, started this journey, I, 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 you're looking at a man who spoke to eight people in Chicago, all right? And how, no. many, how many did you have here in Tyler? Over 500? Yeah, I mean, I have not spoken to anything but a full audience for 18 months anywhere in the world, including places like Japan. So, you can do it. And there are people who are doing, doing what I'm doing right across America, and many around um, Austin, and... Uh, it, 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 Austin's, it, Austin's a hotbed. Yeah, I was talking about the New World. Absolutely, and we have a lot of hosts there, and, and so it should be. Uh, the, 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 we're having Governor Bush all there all these years. <laughs> I mean, uh, crazy. I mean, yeah, I mean, not, not only Bush, and not only is Bush an idiot. He's, he's actually a very arrogant, uh, vicious idiot, and uh, you know uh, that's quite a compelling combination. Yeah. Um, but um, the fact is, you can do things. You see, it's, it's, it's a very simple equation here. They control by controlling the information that people receive. If we are going to, and we are in the process of uh, dismantling this, then alternative information 
that tells the, the, the truth about the movie and exposes it needs to get out there. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone has got a mouth. Everyone. And everyone's got a voice box, or virtually everyone. And therefore, we can articulate and pass this on. Um, and so, it, you know, it's ridiculous to say um, there's nothing we can do. We can get onto uh, radio phone-ins on, on uh, uh, radio shows that don't talk about yeah. this and, and, and bring those issues um, um, into the debate and, and what have you. Because I, what I found... Radio shows that Clear Channel hadn't bought the radio stations in. <laughs> <laughs> because they're busy buying all the radio stations in, in Texas and in the United States. I don't know if they're doing that. Well, this, this is... This is um, one of the things they're doing now, um, I think they've realized that um, there is a challenge coming here mm -hmm. and people are, uh, in, in, in increasingly vast numbers, are so open to this. Um, I tell you what it, what it is, this is why it's so important to communicate this stuff, is the number of people who um, come across in this information that didn't know it existed and they go, do you know, I thought that was going on, I've always thought that, <laughs> but they haven't talked about it. And then they realize that their friends thought like that too, but they haven't talked about it either. We need to start communicating this, and then we'll realize just how many people out there are actually of like mind, but because they haven't spoken to each other. Bring the sign down. I support my president, and I'm willing to die for him and my country. Say you love George Bush. You love him. All right, it's my You question. can read it. Can't you read it? But you won't say it. I love George That's Bush. Fine. I love George W. Bush and number 41. What about Clinton? People. Bush Jr. is like Clinton on steroids. They're, they're confiscating the gun. They're there he goes. Hey, Do a jig for Bush. Listen, look, look at you, would believe, you wouldn't believe the people I run into. They are out there now saying, we love Bush, he's our hero. I ran into a bunch of them yesterday, and, and they just cannot see through they love Bush and he's our hero. It's turned around from they, hating Clinton to loving Bush now. Right. Well, you see, how is that? I mean, how, well, how, it works, how it works is this, and I've got to be honest here, I mean, that's all I can be. Um, um, there is, there is um, a part of um, the mentality of uh, quite a lot of Americans, I find, that um, can be activated by what I call the John Wayne mentality. Um, uh, John Wayne um, was a, a kind of a symbol of, of how they uh, wanted to be, you know, the, the cavalry coming over the horizon. Here's John, big, I'll get him, John, okay, to hell I will, you know, all that stuff. And what, what the Bush administration does and how he conducts himself, because I'm sure he thinks he's bloody John Wayne, mm -hmm. um, they, they activate that part of the psyche of many Americans particularly American, uh, you know, uh, men and that stuff, the macho men, um, that um, s start to see um, the world in this black and white terms of good and bad, we are the, you know, for freedom and all that stuff, and liberating people, and that makes them feel good. Gives them a kind of a, oh, power, yeah, so we're good guys, yeah, we'll sort it out, hey, we're strong, we're tough, hey. Um, and, but what I do find is that more and more Americans are rejecting that simplistic, ludicrous vision of life. But of course there's still large numbers who do see it like that. And the people that do, Bush would be a hero. Because yeah. like, he even walks like John Wayne, <laughs> doesn't he? He gets off that bloody helicopter, walks across the lawn. I was like, uh, looks like he needs the bathroom. I was a bit late that he walks <laughs> there. I always, always get that feeling, you know. You miss the bathroom, George, you know. Um, so so he, he does exude that, um, just as Reagan, Reagan um, was someone who played uh, to the heartstrings of the American dream emotionally uh, on another level. And I mean, this guy was, was another uh, guy who just about knew how to uh, tie his shoelaces. And, uh, and, but because it, uh, in his B-movie actor manner, he was able to articulate this, uh, uh, this, this American dream kind of... Uh, deal and he, he pulled people towards him and what what bush is doing is playing that that john wayne character really um and uh it, it does have an effect but only for a while because um you know the consequences that are coming of um of this uh, whole um uh, agenda for America are absolutely horrendous. First of all, it's going to destroy the economy. Well, doesn't freedom start here in America? Because we're now seeing on our streets, and we have video of this, of uh, police wearing black ski masks, 
no name tags, combat boots, ninja suits. Y'all are not supposed to be wearing black ski masks. You're not supposed to be covering your identity. This is for the record. What is your name for the record, sir? You're covering your identity like a criminal. You are not supposed to be covering your... I'm sure they are. Where? Where? Oh. 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 I gotta get that. Oh, that is perfect. Walk around here. Are you playing favorites? What is your name for the record, sir? If you're going to tell me an order, you need to give me a name and a badge number. Well. freedom start here in America because we're now seeing on our streets, and we have video of this, of police wearing black ski masks, no name tags, combat boots, ninja suits. I mean, it's all, the police state is coming down. They have the Patriot Act 1, the Patriot Act 2 coming down that Bush, uh, Bush is uh, hopefully not going to sign, uh, too. But, I mean, does freedom start with America or are we trying to get everybody else free? How does that work? I think America was set up um, to be a vehicle for this agenda to manifest globally. Um, and ironically, while Bush is uh, articulating about, uh, as you point out, freeing other countries and liberating other countries, while this is going on, the liberation of America is being destroyed by the day. I agree with now, you. Now, I, I am suspect of any, th any country uh, which has to tell its people over and over again uh, this is the land of the free. If it was the land of the free, it should be patently obvious. Yeah. And what happens, Mike, and I've I found this with people I've met over the years, is um, that when they're not touched by it um, directly, they kind of detach from it. Oh, no, this is the land of the free. And then something happens in their lives and suddenly they realize hey, this is a fascist state, this is a police state. And, and um, so, t to a large extent, a lot of people are only going to wake up when they're faced in their own experience with the reality of what's going on. Because what happens with these um, uh, authoritarian states is that um, as long as the people um, abide by the rules, the people are basically left alone. Once they don't abide by the rules, then they're jumped upon. Um, and uh, if you take the, uh, the example of uh, troops, when troops play by the rules and they do as they're told and they go out and blow people away um, uh, in Iraq or wherever, um, they're fine. They're heroes, you know, great heroes, just so brave. When they come home with Gulf War Syndrome, yeah. Uh, suddenly, they're not playing by the rules. Hey, you're complaining about this, you're causing us a problem here, and suddenly they're not heroes anymore. Um, and this is the way the system works, the carrot and the stick. And so, um, uh, people are going to realize more and more as this um, fascist state closes in, this police state closes in, more and more people are going to be affected directly by its imposition. And um, it's going to um, have the um, ironic um, effect of waking more and more people up to this. And I, th I think that's already happening. You because um, more and more people are being affected by this uh, imposition that's unfolding by the day. I mean, what's happened since 9-11 is, um, is, is a straw extraordinary. 
that uh, people can stand by and watch that happen and uh, and think it's okay. But what is it? Problem, reaction, solution. Hey, they've got to do this to save us from the terrorists. No, if you want to be safe from the terrorists, go and knock on the door of the White House and tell them to stop, you know. Um, and so um, uh, we are in a situation now, a, a fork in the road, where we, we, ha- we do have the choice of going one way and uh, bringing true freedom to our experience, or going the other way, not very long down that road, we're going to live in a global fascist state, absolutely certain, because that's the agenda and it's unfolding in front of our eyes. We are so grateful that you gave us this time on Access TV in Austin, Texas. Before we go, we had some questions uh, that came from people in Austin. Uh, Steve, what what were some of those questions that they wanted you to answer? Uh, do you have time to just answer just a few questions? Sure, yeah. What was your impressions of the, the Columbia and what happened there? Uh, I've not researched that enough. Uh, someone uh, ha- has shown me um, in the last few days um, a picture they say they got from the CIA, um, which is, apparently has uh, laser uh, beams going up to it as, as, it, as it exploded. Um, but, you know, um, I, 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 can't, I don't talk about things I, I have not researched. However, when you... Um, when you look at the symbolism of, um, uh, of, the, of the Illuminati and their obsession with symbolism, um, the fact that it was called the Columbia it can be a, a very significant because uh, just very quickly, uh, talking about the symbolism, back in Babylon, um, they, had a, they worshipped a trinity of um, Nimrod, uh, the father, um, Ninos Tamos, the son, and the third point of the Babylonian trinity was uh, a female called Queen Semiramis. They used to symbolize Queen Semiramis as a dove. When uh, they moved their headquarters from Babylon to Rome, they uh, used to worship Queen Semiramis there under the name Venus the Dove. Um, and uh, Venus the Dove um, was uh, you know, uh, pronounced Venus Columba, Columba meaning dove. The French for dove even today uh, is uh, Columba. So um, when a guy called Colon crossed the Atlantic to discover the Americas. Um, they call history is called him Columbus, Columbus, Columba, Semiramis. And when you uh, look at um, the way that the Babylonians symbolize Queen Semiramis, um, it is a mirror of the Statue of Liberty. And the Statue of Liberty is, um, was given to New York by French Freemasons in Paris who knew what it really symbolized, which was the Babylonian goddess. And what is she holding? She's holding the lighted torch, the classic symbol of the Illuminati, the Illuminating Ones. Now, as these bloodlines moved up through uh, Europe, as I talked about earlier, they went massively through France and centered in France to a very large extent. Um, and therefore, if you look at the symbol of the French Republic, the, the, what they call the goddess of the French Republic, which you can see all over Paris, it's another mirror of Queen Semiramis, the Babylonian goddess, because we're talking the same uh, group. And on, on a, um, uh, an island in the River Seine in Paris, just down from the Eiffel Tower and the Pont d'Alma tunnel where they killed Diana, um, is a mirror image. It's extraordinary when you stand there on the side of the river. I was there a few months ago. A mirror image of the Statue of Liberty in the middle of the River Seine. Why? Because that is their image of the Babylonian goddess. And in New York, you've got the American image of the Babylonian goddess. And what they do is they work with um, reverse symbolism. So if something in mainstream society is white, it will be black. They'll they'll portray it as black. If it's black, they'll portray it as white. So what you have um, is classic reverse symbolism in, um, in New York Harbor, because American, Americans understandably think that's the symbol of the land of the free, when actually it's the reverse of that is the symbol of the, of the people controlling the prison. Um, so um, this, uh, this whole Babylonian thing is, is uh, extremely uh, um, important to them in their symbolism, and it's all around us. Yeah. What was the other question? Uh, the other one is, uh, <coughs> the UT Tower is an obelisk in Austin. Um, Charles Whitman, I believe, in 66, um, yeah. killed many people there. The, the tower was designed by an architect from Rice University in Houston. Their, their motto is the Rice Owls. Mm-hmm. Um, after the Whitman shooting, <coughs> the L.A. Police Department started SWAT. And then in 1968, we had the, the gun 
uh, laws in, in the United States where we lost most of the gun freedom. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, do you think that Charles Whitman was a, a typical problem reaction solution for not only uh, getting SWAT, but creating the gun laws of 68? Are you familiar with the, the shooting? Well, um, um, I, I, I can't talk about that in, um, in detail, having, having not researched it, but the principle is exactly um, the way they play it. Um, for instance, um, in Britain, um, we had this guy called Thomas Hamilton, um, who was a clearly uh, uh, programmed uh, being, who was a Freemason in uh, Scotland, and there's a massive scandal to come out about this, um, who went into a school in Dunblane, if you remember, and blew away um, a, 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 a school hall full of kids. Now, what's come out since uh, are his connections um, in terms of uh, child sex um, to some very famous people in Britain. So, um, clearly, the man who did the deed um, with the gun in that school was a connected uh, person to this elite. What happened as a result of that, we had uh, very, very significant changes in gun laws in, uh, in Britain. Um, if you look at um, the, and I've studied this whole mind control thing uh, to a very, very tr uh, large extent. I've talked to many of these people who are recovering from government mind control. Um, and it is absolutely massive. Um, and what they do is they, um, they program them uh, to have different little compartments of the mind and each compartment is, thinks it's the whole mind and they just program those compartments and then they move them around that they'll, they'll have to give them what they call a front altar um, which is the personality that people think is them as they interact with daily life but behind in the subconscious are all these programmed uh, uh, amnesic barriers which they then bring forward like the Manchurian candidate is a, a classic expression of this um, to, the, to the front uh, of the mind and at that point that person's front personality is now pushed back and this program personality is there and it carries out the programming. Now when you look at the background to these kids who go crazy with guns like in Columbine, Columbine, yeah. Columbia, Samiramis, it's all symbolism. Um, these are clearly program kids who are programmed to carry out these uh, acts which create an animosity, which create a fear, which create more gun laws. Um, and I, I'm, not, I'm frankly not um, into uh, guns. I don't own a gun. I, I don't use guns. I, I'm not interested in guns. I don't like guns and all that stuff. But if we're going to be streetwise, um, a lot of people say, oh, we must get rid of guns. They're dangerous. Well, I can understand that. But hold on. Take a deep breath. Just look at it from a bigger picture. Why do these guys actually suddenly want rid of them all? Why? Because if you want to control a people, um, then if they're unarmed, or as much unarmed as you can, um, clearly they are going to be a lot less trouble when you go in with your, um, with your um, literally, um, army to take over than, than they are otherwise. So um, for me, that, that's what these gun laws are really about. And I must say, I, I can only say what I think. Um, I frankly, uh, personally, wouldn't trust Charlton Heston to tell me the time, <laughs> personally. And I think uh, uh, people that, that uh, uh, are opposing these, these changes in, in gun laws and stuff um, should keep their eye on Charlton Heston. Yes, she had another question. I have one question. Uh, the programming of alters, can it only be done with children or is it possible to do this with a 50-year-old functioning adult? It, it's possible to do it. Um, because what they use now is much more sophisticated technology, but it is, it is much more difficult. Um, what, what, the, the, what they want, ideally, um, is um, children before the age of five and six, because then um, uh, the, the brain's not fully formed and the, the things are not absolutely in place, and they can start, basically they rewire the mind, and it's much easier with a child. And, and so what they, what they do um, is, there is a mechanism in the mind which um, shuts out the memory of extreme trauma. This is what um, uh, comes in when you have a really bad road accident and people can't remember the immediate run-up to the accident, the accident and the immediate aftermath. That's a good thing because the mind shuts out 
this horrible memory which they don't want the conscious mind to keep reliving. What they realized is that if this mechanism could be used to turn the minds of people, children, starting with children, um, into um, a honeycomb of these self-contained amnesic barriers shutting out trauma. But to do that, they have to put the children through absolute horrendous trauma. I mean, I've talked to some of these uh, people, uh, many of these people around the world, um, who were um, uh, programmed in this way as children. And of course, they start as children, yeah, but they keep it going. And uh, what they, they're forced to watch uh, animals being sacrificed, they're forced to watch children being sacrificed, they're drugged so that they do um, horrendous things under the drug, it's videoed, and then they play the video back. And they say, see, see what you've done? And they say, hey, we, we won't tell the police if you do what we say. This is what they're doing to kids, right? And what it does is every time a child undergoes this trauma, it, 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 what they call dissociates, it shuts it out, puts this amnesic barrier around it. And this creates the honeycomb of amnesic barriers, which they then program. One thing they do is they program assassination codes. How many times is someone the Illuminati want taken out actually taken out by a lone nutter? Who are these kids that go around shooting people in Columbine and get, and get changes in society as a result? They're people who have gone through this programming. But the other thing that they use these people for, um, uh, don't they, Georgie Bush, the father, um, is to um, allow very famous people to have um, sex with them. And what happens is they activate a, 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 a part of the, the mind, an altar. So uh, the, the famous people uh, or person has sex with a child. And then they push that um, altar back, bring the front altar forward, the, the, the base personality. And this personality has not experienced that, uh, being sexually abused by Father George Bush or whoever. Therefore, it has no memory of it. Um, and, and so this is going on all the time. It's going on in the millions in America alone, never mind in Europe. Um, and one of the people that was really at the heart of developing this was um, Joseph Mengele, who uh, developed this technique um, in the concentration camps where, of course, they had endless people to experiment on. Um, and then, um, of course, he wasn't caught um, after the war. Hey, just like Osama bin Laden. Um, and he was actually brought to America and South America, he worked in two, both places, to carry on and introduce this process of mind control um, in, in America. And, and uh, this infamous mind control operation of the CIA, which actually came to light in public, um, uh, MK Ultra. one of the key people behind that was Joseph Mengele. And one of the places he used to work out of was the China, China Lake Naval Weapons Center in California. So, um, I, I, what I understand as, 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 as uh, we go through the years is that they're perfecting these techniques all the time so that more and more um, they are able to uh, mind control people uh, electronically through technology, which would, to, to uh, come around to your question again, would make it more easy, easier to... Um, mind control older people with this technology rather than having to go through this process they have before of starting with children. Thank oh, you by the way, just, just a quick point. Okay. Talking about mind control, what is mind control? Mind control is someone getting you to behave the way they want you to, right? Under that definition, 99.999% of people of the world are experiencing minute by minute mind control. Anyone, anyone who believes that Osama bin Laden was behind 911 is mind controlled. Because they're believing something that's not true, but what the people programming them through the media want them to believe. Mm -hmm. Sorry. See, well, I can, I, I can understand I how they do that. Uh, Will Thomas out of British Columbia put out. Uh, that's right, I meant him. Uh, quite a bit about uh, chemtrails, and he showed where they were doing it in England and all over the world. Um, we've got a bunch of pictures here of what they've been doing in Austin. I was wondering if you could, uh, you write a lot about frequency in your book. Um, supposedly, the, the thing is they're doing is uh, using frequency and advanced Tesla technology things to control the weather and all this other stuff, and I was just wondering if you could comment on 
on the chemtrail epidemic, if you know anything about it? Well, in, ter in terms of controlling the weather um, and, and, and what have you, um, everything is a frequency in the world that we live in. Everything's a frequency. Rain's a frequency. Um, therefore, if you can uh, generate that frequency, you're going to generate its physical manifestation. Now, when, when, when Native Americans used to do their rain dance and all that stuff, and the, the shaman and the, and the people used to do the, the stuff, the rituals uh, to make it rain, basically what they were doing was playing with this frequency um, to make it rain. That's what they were doing. That's what these people do. It's all frequency. So uh, the, the, they, they can now do it with technology. Um, and um, you know, they can cause tremendous problems by, by, by manipulating the weather in certain areas. I must say that in terms of chemtrails, I've been to uh, over 40 countries as my research. I've seen these things everywhere. Um, and um, uh, it seems that um, they, they possibly contain some kind of uh, um, chemical or combination of chemicals which are affecting people physically. Because, see, one of, one of the points to make is that um, the human entity is an incredibly powerful um, something incredibly powerful uh, to control. And so we have to be hit for them to do that on every level. And what you find when you start to look at these pyramids, and now all the pyramids go into the same pyramid peak, the companies that um, provide the medical drugs are controlled by the same people that put the additives in food the same people that come up with things like aspartame, which is a mind suppressant. Um, and who was the man who brought aspartame to the world? Donald Rumsfeld, uh, the present defense secretary, who was um, uh, hired by Searle Pharmaceuticals to use his um, uh, contacts in the Reagan-Bush administration to force through the, uh, the Food and Drug uh, Administration um, approval for aspartame when all the independent data was saying it should never ever be used. Aspartame is a mind suppressant. It was brought in in soft drinks to start with. Oh, it's a sugar substitute. It's 200 times uh, greater than sugar, uh, sweeter than sugar, and uh, now it's in almost all foods. What is it there for? Um, so then you have uh, the, the banking system, which is to, to control and pressure people through money. Um, and so all these different things, then you have all the, the, the mind things and the electromagnetic things that, that affect factors uh, electromagnetically. All these things are thrown at us, and the chemtrails are one of them, um, to, um, to hold us in this servitude. Now that says something. It says how powerful we are. And um, it's symbolically, we're like... Um, we're like a, a, a ball floating on a tank of water. If you want to hold that ball down at the bottom of the water, you have to put it down and you have to hold it there. You have to hold it there because the moment you let the ball go, boom, its natural state is on top of the water. Our natural state is uh, genius. Um, and to hold us out of that state, to hold us in this servitude and this sheep-like mentality, they have to hit us at every single level of our being physically, chemically, electromagnetically, through the mind, all that stuff, through the emotions, and um, this is just one expression of that. Um, but uh, what, what, the, what the chemicals are actually are designed to do, um, I, I don't know, but the fact that uh, this is going on all over the world is, is uh, you know, beyond question. He's running out of time. You had one more question on the Pink Floyd thing. What was that about? Oh, it was a, uh, I don't know, maybe a silly question. It, whether you knew uh, Roger Waters or David Gilmour and whether you thought that they might be uh, Tavistock trained. Don't know. Don't know. Um, I, 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 what I will say is this, that um, the music industry is extremely important to the Illuminati, like the uh, movie industry is, um, because um, it affects um, us so much in terms of um, our minds. Um, what, is, what is music? It is very clearly vibration. And um, so this is why some music grates with us and some we feel good about. Um, and so through music they can affect us vibrationally. Um, and they're doing so all the time. And a lot, and I tell you what, it's kind of funny. The more that I, I talk to people who have been involved in the mind control uh, operations, and uh, people who have uh, been programmed and what have you, um, 
the names that they reel off of people who either pro helped to program them or were themselves programmed, um, it's like, uh, basically, it's like a, 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 a roll call for the Oscars, you know. And, you know, when you think about it, if, they're, if they are able to move you between personalities, what better state to be a great actor or actress if they can do that? And so a lot of these very, very famous um, people are actually um, either um, programmers or are themselves programmed. And it's the same throughout the music industry. And one of the, 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 the major areas that comes up again and again in the reports of these people is the country music industry in America. I mean, whew, what a den that is in terms of this, this whole uh, deal we've been talking about, Satanism and, um, and uh, mind control. So yeah, and, and, and then you start looking who controls the music industry, you know. Was it right, the Carlisle Group, George Orwell, of course, who just bought Universal? Of course! Makes absolute bloody sense. Um, and what they do, again, this, is those that um, are coming from a, a point of view in music or in movies, where they wish to um, uh, express something positive or, or tell the truth or what have you, they're filtered out. Oh, no, I don't think we'll go with that contract. I don't think we'll go with that group. I don't think we'll go with that movie. And this is how it's done. You know, it's, it's so simple. If you control the top of the pyramid, then you control what happens below the pyramid until we wake up and start rebelling, that is, which we're beginning to do, thank goodness. David Ike, it has been a pleasure. Pleasure. And, uh, I want to thank Sue Ann, Jimmy, thank you. Jimmy Gardner, Mason, and Steve Blaha for filming this. This will be on Access TV. I, I, can you just tell us real quick how many books you have out and what the names of them are? Oh, go, go. Oh, I have quite a few. I, uh, my latest one uh, is uh, Alice in Wonderland of the World Trade Center Disaster. Why the official story of that one is a monumental lie. Three-year-old that takes apart, 500 pages. One's called uh, The uh, Children of the Matrix. One's called The Biggest Secret which you have there. Another one's called The Truth City Free. One's called I Am Me, I'm like, I Am Free. And, you know, they're the ones, really, um, that have... Uh, I've done it more recent times, um, but it's a, it's a progression, it's a story. Um, e each of them um, uh, is is part of the story. You put them all together, you get the you know the, the picture. But um, it's very it's very very encouraging for me, um, having walked this road as I'm sure we all have um, years ago, when no one wanted to know, um, to see that uh, the awakening is with us. And um, I'm hoping someone suggested it that. Um, they may put a talk up for me in Austin uh, this year, which would be great. We hope so. DavidIke.com is the website. That's the one. And one more thing, if you want to look in this camera and tell Austin, Texas, Travis County, anything you want to tell them, David Ike, and we'll wrap it up. Uh, over that one, well, what can I say? Well, first of all, I'm not a guru sitting on a mountain cross like saying, I have all the answers, you and me. What I will say is this, is something I've learned about myself. Um, we all have this idea that we are ordinary men and women in the street and we've got no power. That's exactly what the game wants us to believe. People who think they're ordinary live ordinary lives. People who live, uh, who think they have no power live powerless lives. Neither because they are ordinary or powerless but because they believe they are. And what this whole deal is, is indoctrinating and conditioning into people a sense of limitation, a sense of powerlessness, a sense that you can do nothing because that in that with that mentality we are a party trick for these guys to control and manipulate. Um, more and more people, however, are starting to realise, as I have on my journey, that I am not ordinary and I'm not powerless. I am actually I am all powerful um, and I am uh, unique and I can uh, control my reality. I can uh, dictate what happens in my life because I'm actually in control of it. What we've done is we've allowed this conditioned reality of ordinariness and powerlessness to dictate our sense of what we can do, to, uh, to, to dictate the sense of um, what we can manifest in our lives when, um, in fact, we are in completely, we're completely in control of our lives. We've just given that power away. The only power these power people have over us is the power we give to them. If George Bush makes a statement uh, and says, we've had a discussion and this is what we've decided to do, and the people say, no, we're not. Where's George Bush's power? Nowhere. He ain't got any power. 
accept that which we give to, to him. And uh, if we're going to um, make a difference in the world and change these things we don't like, we need to take our power back. And that means starting with ourselves and realizing we have power in the first place. The power to dictate our own destiny. The, the power not to have to do what other people tell us we should do. Not to think the way people tell us that we should think. Not to keep our mouths shut and our heads down because we're worried about what other people think. Who cares what they think? They have a right to think what they like, but so do we. And the more people that um, start speaking out and expressing this uniqueness that we have, instead of being a clone of the system, the more the system will start to disintegrate because it depends on clones and it's terrified of people expressing their uniqueness and expressing what they really believe and living the lives they really want to live because that breaks up the uniformity that holds this whole deal together. Be yourself, um, change yourself and you change the world because you are the world and the world is us. That's what I found anyway. Thank you, David Ice, and we'll see you next time, Austin, Texas. Thanks and God bless. Thank you.